Hey, welcome back to another day, another vlog. Good to have you all back, wherever you're coming over from the podcast. A bit of music to get us going for the morning. Um, wherever you're over from the podcast, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, uh, LinkedIn, wherever else on the platform you are listening. Uh, if you're running on a treadmill or if you're sitting in a computer and trying to desaturate yourself from work and just stop thinking about work for five seconds. Well, I'm here to help you out. Uh, I hope you all had a good morning wherever you are. So I'm getting ready to go home. I've got the bags all packed. I've just checked into the flight, so that's all done and dusted. Get back home and see the family. Can't wait. Super excited to see uh, my lovely wife and my little buddy Jack and Bentley. So yeah, very, very cool. So a lot happening there. I did a little bit of work last night on the photos for this week's video. Um, probably a little bit behind realistically, just feeling a bit brr, a bit flat at the moment in that regard. So I've got them all set up, started going through them, some really good stuff. Uh, this one's gonna include, remember I said on the Elephant Rocks video, I didn't take me drone because it was supposed to be an astro shoot. Obviously can't fly at night, so I didn't take me drone and all that sort of stuff. Well, I got a chance to shoot back uh, on a day trip to go and check it out. I uh, had the drone and I was able to get some shots of that and some other, and we also went to a beautiful big tree forest as well. So um, with these beautiful old, I think it's iron bark. Um, they're like 90 meters tall and you can walk up on this big elevated platform through. Me being scared of heights, uh, absolutely bloody terrifying, especially with all the young kids jumping and bouncing on this, uh, I think it, I can't remember what it's called, but it's basically one of those walking things that goes up into the trees, but it's a suspended uh, walking track, I guess. Um, but yeah, and so whenever I moves, it shakes, and I was just like, and Jack's going, come on, Dad. <laughs> so it was pretty cool in that regards. Uh, beautiful old trees. Uh, it's a great little thing. I think it's the Valley of the Giants, I think they call it down in the south coast there, so that was pretty cool, and to get some drone shots of elephant rocks and stuff like that was pretty darn amazing. So look, that's looking pretty good. I've got a little bit of work to do, and a bit of catching up to do. Uh, I think it's just a bit of a barra classic hangover to get back into normal work. Um, so yeah, it well, shouldn't take me too long to get back into the process. Rightio, some fun things. Not a massive bit of tech stuff coming out today, some things I do want to talk about. That Sigma, obviously, the release of that yesterday, we had the leaks photos. Well, they were 100% accurate, the photos that and the thumbnail I put up there. So you'll probably see it up there again today on the thumbnail, thinking, why is he talking about it again? Well, just wanted to confirm a couple of things from the actual event. Now, uh, it's got the price, 900 US dollars. So that's pretty darn expensive for a 35 mil. So that's, you're looking at least... 13 to 1400 it is an art series, so I can sort of gather that, but it's also an art series, it's just a, it's a prime, it's not a, like my 18 to 35, which is a, got a zoom, so you got a bit of flexibility in there, uh, but it is a fixed one. It's more of a movie, um, uh, I guess it's sort of a movie, sort of a video centric type uh, focal length. Um, it's not really something you'd use, I would use for photography, being landscape, it's not a wide or a telephoto that I normally, which is pretty much the two I use. Um, generally, even like my 50 mil, my beautiful uh, Pentax Supermar, uh, Super Tacoma uh, 8 blade, it's, uh, that's a 50 mil and, I, and it's hard to sort of find something to use 50 mil on. It's, it's a little bit tricky in that regard. So um, they did say it was good for astrophotography, which in the, in the, um, in the event, and I'm like, well, no one's gonna use the 35 mil fast road photography. It's nowhere near wide enough to get like the Milky Way or anything you want in there. I guess if you want to lock into a certain point, I guess you could do it, but yeah, I don't really, it's strange that they actually even put that in that sort of category. It's definitely not a wide lens of 35. So that was a little bit interesting. Um, now they're saying this got in enhanced, um, um, ugh, excuse me, enhanced uh, action in the corner so you don't get that edging and that that fade off and, and lose focus they've done a lot of work in that it's got less longitude longitudinal tool 
less longitudinal chromatic aberration. Some technical words in there, probably not good for my much English from Darwin. Um, and less flare in it too. So that's pretty good. And a lot of them do, do those new coatings they've got. Now remember, this is replacing a lens that has, was their first one for their mirrorless sort of hit and run that sort of helped them build their, their reputation. So it had to be very good. And they did a lot of work. They get, they talked a lot about what they what they found and, and to get rid of ghosting and some other thing issues they had. So it was pretty interesting to sort of listen to that and get an understanding of the actual process and how hard it is to actually get something, uh, one of these lenses up to the quality that they sort of put out. So that was, I thought, pretty cool. So look, it is an art lens. It's $900. It's uh, Look, it's gonna be a fantastic lens. If you use the 35 mil a lot, uh, it's a lot cheap. It's about 500 bucks US cheaper than a Sony GF, GM model of that same length. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's for Sony, so that's its main competitor. Um, but it's also like, it's, they're a great little company. Sigma do fantastic lenses. Cameras, I don't know, but look, the Sigmas, the two Sigmas I have uh, are fantastic. The quality and the image that comes out of them are fantastic and it's definitely something I have no problems pushing them as a great lens company. So I have no doubt this lens will be very good. 900 bucks, I think it's something you really need. If you, if you said, if you need that focal length, probably the 1500 bucks it's gonna cost in Australia is, is probably not gonna be a worry because the GM will be 2000 or 2500 here, so yeah. Definitely worth checking out. Uh, I just wanted to give you a bit of an update on that one. Now, Canon uh, just dropped this morning um, a CR3, so pretty much confirmed rumors. Uh, three new Cine cameras coming out this year. Uh, they uh, their saw, The source to Canon rumors basically said they didn't want to fall behind like they did with 4K, so they're jumping in heavy on the 8K stuff. So these are gonna be 8K cameras um, and a 4K high dynamic range version. So there's three models, it's the EOS C300S, the C500S, and the C700DR, and that DR means the dynamic range. So pretty cool, I'll just go through the stats and we'll have a bit of a chat. Now these should be all released this same round October, the NAB show. Uh, it's a big show where Canada does a lot of their releases, so expect these to be dropping then. Now uh, 8K, on the C300S, I'll go for that one first, that's like the base spec, and then I'll just add in the different stuff that the others have. They all have this, what's in here, but a little bit different. So 8K, super 35 mil sensor, 60 frames per second, uh, 4K 120, it's got a BSI stack, 3.2 UM, 8K DGO sensor, so that's that new sensor, that's the, the big girl. Uh, it's got the new version of the dual pixel autofocus, uh, I think the R3 is going to be getting that as well. So that's looking pretty wild. That's that torso, eye, head stuff. Uh, it's sounding pretty good. The base ones, that C300 is going to have 16 stops of dynamic range, which is amazing. That's very, very cool. Super important uh, for doing film and video. Um, even for camera stuff, it's fantastic. But even more so with film, going from light to dark a dark room out to a bright sunny day uh, can really kill a scene and you might have to cut cut in and do two takes and start from outside and start inside. That dynamic range sometimes gives you a little, if you get enough of it, you get the ability just to walk out and it'll adjust and fix itself. Um, so that's pretty cool. Now, uh, dual digit eight DV chips getting in this one. So the DG8 is in the M50 and it's pretty much the latest that we talked about a DGX coming out for Canon, the new 10. Uh, so we've got that, but this is gonna run dual digigates in there and a 10 millisecond readout. So it, pretty fast, it's gonna be good for, I, I think we'll see a fair bit of these actually on YouTube, the 300. Um, there's a lot of YouTubes like uh, Potato Jet and a few other guys that use the 300 series to film their stuff, in uh, either in studio or some other stuff. So look, that's pretty exciting. We'll definitely see a lot of them out and about. Next one up is the 500S. Uh, now that's differences being basically than the other stuff, 4.65 UM sensor and it's gonna have 17 stops of dynamic range. So a little bit more dynamic range, a little bit bigger pixels on that sensor. And that's basically what that UM is. It's just the size of the pixels on the sensor. 
that gives you a low light. So A7S3 had big pixels, and that was the, the new terminology there now. They're talking about um, maybe, say, a 30 mil, 30 megapixel sensor, but it's got big pixels. So that big pixels lets more light in, so you can do astro and or low light sort of shooting. So basically, that's the diff that's what that UM means when I'm talking about that. Now, that, that's basically the only two differences in the 500. We go up to the 700 DR, that's that dynamic range. Now that's going, it's only going to be 4K, full, but it's going to be full frame. So the other ones, other two are 8K Super 35. The big girl, the 700, is a 4K full frame sensor. So that's a big, big sensor. 240 frames per second in fast mode and 180 in WDR mode. Now I'm not 100% sure, sure what the WDR mode, I'm, I'm assuming it's a, uh, some sort of wide dynamic range mode or something like that. Uh, but 180 frames at 240, that's pretty darn cool. That'll be quite handy. Now it's got a 9.6 UM sensor. So that's nearly double the 500, which is insane. So these monster, monster pixels, it's gonna look like a, a friggin' fly's eyes. I reckon the sensor's gonna be crazy. 20 plus stops of dynamic range. 20, that's insane. That's absolutely crazy. Five millisecond readout. Uh, again, that's very cool. So that you can't wait to see these come out. We'll hear, I'm sure we'll hear more as they come out. Now it is a CR3 for Canon Rumors. Now he's really, really good in uh, his info. So I would expect that these things are pretty much close to the mark and basically just about ready to be announced or development announced. So if you're into video and you want, are you looking for a new camera? Uh, you've got some great options coming up with some amazing dynamic range stuff, which is going to be, which is a big, big key feature for any camera or video person. So great, great to see. Now, last but not least, just dropped on Twitter just before, before I jumped on the channel. Last one I did before we finish for the day is the Apple M1 chip. Now we know all know about the M1 chip. Uh, look, it's done wonders. It just got put in the iMac, which I think is fantastic. We talked about that the other day. The iMac got the chip. It got the new body. There's a couple of things that people aren't happy about. That They're not happy about the chin. I thought about that chin last night, and I thought, well, actually, that's probably not too bad. Most people, when you're working, you've got post-it notes. It's a great place to put your post-it notes. You could uh, put stickers on there. Uh, you could put a lot of things. You could put those Velcros there for your little... SD hard drive, SSD hard drives, you know, how with that little uh, hack that you put on your laptop so you can Velcro on the back of your laptop, put your SSDs on there, then when you're traveling, you've got your storage all ready to go. You could do that on there as well. Um, I think there's a lot of uses for it. Is it ideal? No, I do agree. The white background's pretty silly. Having said that, we've gone off topic, <laughs> but the M1's in that. The M1's in the current MacBooks and MacBook Airs, the Mac Mini, waiting for the M1X. Well, apparently today we've got the in M2 is already in mass production. So whether they're not going to run an M1X uh, and just jump in the name straight to an M2, which I think is ideal. You can go from 1 to 100, really. Do we need the S's and the X's and the stuff like that to step in i don't think we really need that um so an m2 is in production uh we can well apparently the rumors say we can confirm that um volume production and will be in the new macbook pro laptops later this year so that is huge if we can see the similar sort of jump in performance that we've seen from the intel chips to the m1 or the what that did for the m1 how We'll, this will be the first time we'll see a, a jump from an M1 to the M2, its its predecessor. How big of that jump will be? We know from the Intel series to the M1, it was a massive, massive jump. It reduced a lot of thermal issues, it took the temperature, reduced power consumption, but increased the actual power of the unit tenfold. So if they can do that again with the M2, we're not sure of anything other than that. Uh, all we know it's in production. We don't know what size, if it's what nanometer size it is. I think the M1's a five, so is this a four? Not sure. Tri chip production is crazy around the world. Uh, we've talked about that plenty of times. 
uh, TSMC in Taiwan and Samsung, probably the two biggest. They make most of the chips for everything. TSMC are the, are the gurus. They're based in Taiwan. So as well as the chip shortage and they can't keep up, we've seen on the news yesterday that China is looking to take back Taiwan. They want to take it back if they need to take it back by force. Uh, our Australian government was also talking about the fact that, it, that uh, we may have to get ready for war with China if they decide to invade Taiwan. Pretty insane. Taiwan has been on its own two feet for a long time. Uh, I don't see any reasoning behind this other than China's arrogance. That's pretty darn crazy. We all know how good of a job China did with Hong Kong. They just about, they've turned that into a war zone uh, and destroyed one of the most beautiful cities I've ever been to. And it's, it's very hard to even think about going back to Hong Kong when you know China runs it now. Uh, and they run it really badly, and all those protests and all that drama they had was not good. I'd hate to see that get pushed into Taiwan. I would definitely pray and hope that uh, China's not stupid enough to think that they can just walk in and invade Taiwan and just take it back, because I can't see any any picture where the, uh, norm, the free world is going to let China just go and take Taiwan. It's crazy, so it's a bit scary too because if they're dead keen on doing it, that means that, yeah, that's going to be the end of China. Now, having said that, that's why I've sort of, it's a bit of a side note, but that then is going to massively affect global tech stuff. And then that's another reason why I think the US, uh, all the sort of uh, guys that team up together, are not going to let China do it because they won't want China to come in. Because they come in, they're going to basically be able to take over and control TSMC. So that's that's the end of the chip market. Uh, that's scary. So hopefully TSMC is looking at making building a manufacturing facility somewhere a little safer uh, than where they are now because it's a little little scary. I've got to got to admit that's not a good thing. China's got millions and millions of soldiers. It's hard to get them into countries. You've got to land them there. Uh, what They're going to have guns. They're not going to be afraid of dying, I guess. Um, so it's a little bit little bit scary. Uh, not good news at all. But yeah, sort of a bit of a side note there to that chip issue. Can just remember that Taiwan is the where most of the chips on the planet are made. All of Apple stuff, all, most of your car stuff, your mobile phones, they're all there. China wants that country back. Very scary. So, look, uh, M2 sounds fantastic. Can't wait to hear more on that. We will get more on that, I'm sure, no doubt, in the next couple of weeks. Uh, a little bit scary with China and Taiwan. Fingers crossed. China pulls their head in and just backs off and, yeah, just worry about their own country that they've, where they where they destroy their, their own country. Yeah, they don't have to destroy any more countries. They stuffed Hong Kong as enough. Anyway, I'm waffling on. I will see you all. Yeah, it should be tomorrow. I should be fine tomorrow to get back and catch up with you. I'll be back home in Brizzy. I will see you all then. Thanks for stopping by. I hope you have a fantastic day. And yeah, if you go on that way, that way, I'll catch you tomorrow. Peace.